everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video it's the second episode in my Tuesday tutorial series and this is a new series where I'm focusing on helping you guys improve your colour pencil drawings so last week we looked at if you're a beginner how to choose the right materials for you and in this week's episode we're going to look at how you can get the most amount of colours out of just 10 coloured pencils so if you think this is going to be something that is going to interest you make sure you keep watching Okay, so for today's video I'm going to be using the 12 set Faber-Castell Polychromos and this is the smallest set that you can buy and it's really good if you're a beginner and you don't have much money to spend. So what I'm going to be using is 10 of the pencils from this set. So all of them apart from the white and the black, but I will be using the white a tiny bit at the end. But for the first part I'm just going to be using those 10 pencils and I'm going to be applying them two at a time in all of the different combinations to show you how you can get a really big variety of colours. And you could even do this with three pencils or four pencils at a time to get an even bigger range. So anyway let's get started on the tutorial. So for this colour chart I'm using a 10 by 10 square grid and along the top and along the side I've gotten all of the 10 colours written down. And the top colours are going to be the dominant colours and the dominant colours are the colours that I'm applying the most. So for example on the first column the cadmium yellow is the dominant colour. So I'm going to be applying two layers of this and one layer of the mixing colour. And this means that every colour has a chance to be a dominant colour. So you'll get a bigger variety of colours. And then I'm going in with a zested pencil blend and using a paintbrush. So I will put all the materials that I'm using in the description below. So I'm just applying it with a paintbrush and I'm going to blend this out. And then I go over again with a layer of yellow because it's yellow and it's quite a light colour anyway. But for the darker colours I won't do this. Also, because this isn't a blending tutorial, I'm not too worried if the swatches look a bit grainy, but next week's tutorial will be focusing on how you can blend coloured pencils, so if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. So the first three columns, I have got it a bit slowed down so that you can really see what's happening, but for the final seven columns, I'm just going to speed it up so it's not really long-winded. So when it gets to the magenta as being the dominant colour, that's where you'll really see a big variety of colours. So with the yellows and oranges, there isn't too much of a variety. There is variety between them, but you'll see a really big variety when I do the magenta and blues. Okay, so I'm using the same technique to do all of the colour swatches, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish off all of the colours now. So this colour chart would be a really good thing to keep so that when you're drawing something and you don't know what colour to use, you can refer back to it and look for the closest colour to the colour you want and then you can see which colours that you mix to create that colour. So then it's easier than having to try and figure it out all over again. And if you have a bit of extra time on your hands then you can create one for three colours or four colours, it will be a much bigger colour chart but then you'll have even more variety of colours to choose from to make sure that you get the closest match to the colour that you want. And also because you do have a white and a black in the 12 set of polychromos that means that you can create lighter values and darker values of all of these colours as well. So just by adding some white to it then you can really lighten up those colours.
Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to be doing to this colour chart is just filling in those cross boxes with the original colours. So this is so that we can see the variety of colours we were able to create compared to just using the original colours. And once I've done that, I'm going to be drawing a little colour wheel and talking to you guys about how you can use the colour wheel effectively when you're creating your own drawings. So when you hear people talk about a colour wheel, you may have heard something called complementary colours. And these are colours that are opposite to each other in the colour wheel. So for example, it's normally a primary colour linked up with a secondary colour. So yellow is complementary to purple, orange is complementary to blue, and green is complementary to red. So it's always one of those three primary colours linked up with one of the secondary colours. And complementary colours are really good because they make each other stand out and pop a bit more. So for example, if you want to do a drawing and you want to use lots of different colours but you don't know where to place those colours, if you have a colour then next to it you should either use a colour that's complementary, so opposite to it in the colour wheel, or a colour that's next to it in the colour wheel. So for example, if you want to use yellow and you don't know what to put it next to, you can either put it next to orange, which is next to it on the colour wheel, or purple, because that's its complementary colour. So when you're doing your original drawings, make sure that when you're planning the colours that you keep the colour wheel in mind, because this will make sure that the colours are looking the best that they possibly can. So the final thing that I'm going to talk to you about is how you can use multiple colours, so three or four colours to create firstly an earthy tone and then a skin colour and then a lighter pink colour because this colour chart doesn't have many pinks in it and then how you can create a natural looking black because a lot of people don't really like to use straight black so how you can create black without using any black at all. So the first colour that I'm creating is an earthy tone and for this I'm using the walnut brown, the burnt ochre, the emerald green and the light green and on the left hand side I'm using the darker colours and then on the right hand side it's going into the lighter colours. So I'm just layering these and then I'm blending it out with a zest dip pencil blend. The next colour that I'm doing is a skin tone, so a lot of you might think it would be really hard to create skin out of these colours because none of them are really natural looking skin tones. The closest that you get is probably the burnt ochre. So for the skin colour, I'm actually using five coloured pencils. I'm using the white pencil, walnut brown, burnt ochre, deep scarlet red and the cadmium yellow. And firstly I'm applying a light layer of yellow and then red over the top. And then I'm mixing in the burnt ochre and then on the darker parts towards the left, I'm just applying a bit of walnut brown. And then I'm going to blend this out with the zestic pencil blend and it will look quite unnatural. But then once that's dried, I can just apply more layers. So I'm going over it with the white and I'm blending that out. And then I'm going over it with the white again and blended that out. And that will create a really natural looking skin tone. The third colour that I'm creating is a lighter pink colour, so for that I'm using the deep scarlet red and then the magenta because this creates more of a pink colour rather than like an orangey sort of tone. And then I'm going to apply the white over the top and I'm doing this the same as I did the skin colour so I'm going to blend it out and then add the white, blend that out and then add a bit more white. And the final colour that I'm creating is a natural black and for this you can just create black using the walnut brown and the darker blue colour. And just alternate layers of those colours and blend them out to create a really dark black colour. So I first start off by doing a layer of blue and then a layer of brown over the top. And then I blend this out and this creates quite a lightish grey tone. And then once that's dried I can just add and repeat the process until I've got it as dark as I want. And that's it for this tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember if you're new here and you're enjoying these tutorials and want to learn more about Colour Pencil, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on the tutorials which are going to be happening every Tuesday. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always I'll leave links to my social media sites in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video, bye! <laughs>